Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. This is an issue I've worked on since I was in the State Senate, how we increase options and choices for seniors, and home health is an important part of that. And right now, uh, what we have found, there are 74,000 Tennesseans that are on the Medicare home health benefit. 87% of those Tennesseans have three or more chronic conditions. So these are complex medical conditions, and they require a high quality home health care. And we are hearing from our providers in Tennessee a tremendous amount of concern about the payment policy that CMS put in place in 2020 and how it is creating some instability and uncertainty in the process for these individuals. And I have visited with many um, who have looked at how next year's payment rates proposed in June would make matters worse for these patients. Um, and as we have discussed today, and as you all have discussed in your testimonies, uh, seniors want and deserve the ability to be able to stay in their homes. But you look at this payment policy, and then you look at this historic inflation, and also the workforce challenges that we have, especially in rural areas. And you can see that this is creating what will end up being a perfect storm in the most negative sense for many seniors with complex medical issues. And Mr. Chairman, I will tell you, I think CMS should have been at this table today to talk about this payment policy and about these um, these, this proposed rule. So, Ms. Edwards, let me come to you first. Uh, just for a moment, talk about what would happen to your agency if this rule were finalized and put in place. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, if this payment policy goes through with additional reductions, um, I have no doubt that our agency would probably have to close. We've already reduced to the bare minimum that we possibly can right now and much further would indicate a closure. Yeah, you can't work without making some money. Mr. Dumby, when you look at small healthcare agencies, and we have, we've got 95 counties in Tennessee, and just about every one of them have a home health agency. They're small. Talk about the impact on these small independent providers that are out there trying to meet the needs in their community, trying to work alongside a rural hospital, trying to work a alongside a long-term care facility, and trying to provide the service in home. I have both the fortune and misfortune of traveling a lot around the country and talking to the home care providers. And the word of, of the year for them that I heard in Georgia this week, in Texas last week, and other states over the previous weeks is survival. Uh, most home health agencies are, just as you described, small operations. Uh, even the very large companies are very local small companies uh, in that respect. So their fear is, and anxiety is growing. And you know, when, you, when you look at what they're doing they're saying no to patients. There's no harder thing for a healthcare professional to do than to say no. And to say no, you're not gonna be able to come home, you're gonna end up in another institutional care setting instead. Uh, that crushes them and crushes their hearts and their souls. And the families are absolutely affected by that as well. And sometimes the no is because they don't have capacity, but a lot of the capacity actually is due to the financial circumstances. There, a home health agency reported recently to me that they made job offers to 160 nurses, and every one of the nurses said no because they could get paid higher. Yeah, I, and those health care, the worker challenges are important. I want you to talk for just a moment, too, about the lack of interoperable electronic health records and the impact that this has. 
having helped care for someone who was elderly, you see some of these gaps. You know, and, and this is very ironic because so many resources have been directed towards physicians in hospitals for interoperable health records. Nothing was directed towards home care, yet home care actually was first out of the gate and ready to go to do you know, health care with interoperable health care records. We have a nurse in an individual's home right at this very moment who has point of care planning with her, uh, either her phone or her, uh, her, her, her iPad. Uh, with electronic connections to physicians, to hospitals, to their own office, but they don't talk the same language. The ability to respond immediately to someone's needs in the home setting when something exacerbates in their clinical condition requires that kind of interoperability. So we're looking and saying, will the rest of the world catch up with us someday so that we can have the, the full value of those interoperable healthcare records to then provide the highest quality care to the patients as well. Thank you. My time has expired. Uh, Dr. Moroz, I'm going to submit a question in writing to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Stabenow. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Dane. So it's 